Spelach Tik, right? And then the mother starts reading it, she says, that's the way it takes 35, you know. <laughs> Doctor, could you come? <laughs> <laughs> and then the mother answered on the other side of the reading, my child is sick. And then the father says, we live on so-and-so street. Is he yelling top of your life? So you see what it is, what Rav Nachman says, if I daven just for luxury, I'm calm. Remember, when Levi Yitzhak Vodich was yelling on top of his lungs when he davened, was there someone davening more than Rabbi Yitzhak? So Ms. Nagat came, he says, well, what are you yelling so loud? Well, you think God is not here, but you have to yell so loud. So Rabbi Yitzhak didn't answer. He said, I'm talking to you. He didn't answer. He said, I am talking to you. He said, ha, you see? <laughs> you see, when it hurts, you begin to yell, right? <laughs> and then one more thing, you know, like, you see what he says, that my very, you see what it is, so deep, that not I pray, and then God gives me. My very prayer, my prayer, gives me life. My doubting, the way I doubt, this is what gives me life. If I doubt in this all my heart, with all my soul, I receive life with all my heart, with all my soul. If I doubt just a little bit, I receive a little bit. It says, Chadoshim Rabkorim Rabba Munasefa. You know what it is? Every morning, I mamish have to receive life. I want you to know something which is the deepest depth. What did Avraham Avinu do to the world? You know, until Avraham Avinu, the world was Mamish dead. You know, what is a pagan? A pagan is half dead, right? Because he's not connected to God. And you know, he's, he's connected to a dead God, right? What, what is God? Your vision of God is the highest thing you have, right? And if your if you're God is, is a dead piece of wood, so that's what you are. So Abraham Avinu, the Mamish gave us life. Why are we Yidin? Why are we Yidin eternal? Because we are connected to something which is eternal. The Greeks, they're the coming, coming, they're going. You are as eternal as to your source of life. So he says, Chadoshim, not correct. <coughs> if you want to renew your, your morning, Rabba Munusa. So he says, Ki emunu hit fila. Because this also is also so beautiful. He says, Davening, Davening and believing is a sin. You know, I, I, someone believes, yeah, I believe. You know, I believe if you put sugar in the cake, it tastes good. Or oh, you believe in God? Ah, oh, it's fire, right? That is fire. You know, Rav Nachman is another uh, thing, maybe it does say it here. What is being in exile? What does it mean, being in exile? In exile, the Beis HaMikdash is, des is destroyed. So what does it have to do with the Beis HaMikdash? We could have the Beis HaMikdash and then or the ones you could have told us, you know, build a new holy temple in Dallas. Why not? So he says that an exile means that you put limits, you put limits to what God can do. You put limits to what God can do. And also, you put limits to what you can do. Because my, my vision of God is what I think of myself. There's a Torah from the Rebbe Rabbah. This is for Atta Yisroh. Moha Hashem in the Kech Now Israel, what does God ask of you? So he says, Mamash, give out. For Atta Yisroh. More, whatever you are, Hashem in That's what God is for you. 
whatever you think of yourself. You see the deepest step. By Noah it says, Mamin the Eina Mamin. Noah believed in God, and yet he didn't believe in God. He believed that God can do anything. He believed God can destroy the world. But he had a hard time believing that God can take the lowest sinner and make him enjoy of him. That he didn't believe. It was not so clear to him. So God should not make it, couldn't make a covenant with Noah that Mashiach is coming. What's the holding of Mashiach? Tell me the whole world how much will change. I have to tell you something awesome. I'm sure some of you remember learning it. It says, Vayishma Yisra, Yisra heard. Now she says, you heard that, God bless you, that we crossed the Red Sea <coughs> and Amalek came. So everybody's asking. The Torah says, Vayishma Yisra, you heard you left, came out of Egypt. What's Rashi saying, Torah was here. <coughs> remember the Torah from, from, from Beth Yaakov, what's the Torah? You know, because the question is, he should have come right after we came out of Egypt. He heard the miracles, why didn't he come right away? He only came after we crossed the Red Sea and after Amalek. What was holding him back? The Ramesh of Yisrael Torah. Yisrael Torah, you know, I'm really an old man. I've been a pagan all my life. I don't think I can still change. I'm too far gone. But then he heard that water can change into dry land. You mean water can change? And if water can change, I can change also. Then he adds something beautiful. Why did the water really change? Why was it so much God says, you, you walk? You know something? The water is looking at the Eden. And the water says to the Eden, I can't believe it. Last week he was downhearted slaves, beaten to death. And now you're Mamash free people. Not just they had their don't the Egyptians on their neck. You know, it's very clear in the Torah and this one week. Give out, you know, what, what we don't change in a hundred years, they change in those eight days. The water says, for people like this, I'll change also. For them, I'll change also. So here comes Amalek. Why didn't Amalek come to attack us? Why didn't he come out of this? Oh, that doesn't bother Amalek. You're a threat. You want to get free. Amalek says, okay, I'm with you all the way. <coughs> but what? You believe in change? You believe that people can change? They don't want permit. I won't permit this. Because Amorik's whole theory is that you cannot change. Right? That you cannot change. Doubt. I'm sorry, what? Doubt. Sussex. I'm more like to here, yeah, also. But anyway, Kemuni Mitzvah. Because this is one of the deepest stars. You know, why is it? Really heartbreaking. When somebody, God forbid, is sick, you go to a rabbi to pray. Why don't you pray yourself? The answer is very simple. My belief in God is so limited. I don't really believe that the person who's half dead can suddenly get out of bed and dance. I wish I would, but I don't. So I'm going to a tzaddik, to a rabbi. And I know he much believes. He believes God can take you out of your grave. He believes that God can make you... I tell you, if you remember this story, this is an awesome, it's a good story to remember, especially if, if some of you are visiting sick people. <coughs> we should never have to visit sick people, everybody should be well. <coughs> the Heilige... He's okay there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. The Heilige, the Moshe Leib Sassabe, comes to a hospital to remember and there they tell him they hate to see the man. And uh, the doctor says he has maybe <coughs> 10 minutes to live. And the whole family is standing there looking to watch. It's already seven minutes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> three more minutes to go. And they say, it's good you came here, he has about three more minutes to go. 
And Ramon Shalup's after realizes and they put this whole thing on him. You know, they expect him to die in a few minutes. And Nebuchadnezzar feels responsible <laughs> that he has to, to live up to this expectation. So Ramon Shalup walks in and he says, I swear to you that you live. And he knew one thing Ramon Shalup doesn't swear for him. Gave him so much strength. He's had up in his bed. He got well. You see what it is? Ramon So someone asked him, Rabbi, how, I know you don't swear false, but how could you swear, you know? So he says, I, I saw one thing that he gave up because nobody gave him strength to live. So a machine gave him life. So he says, Ki Mamish believing in God, and Mamish, this is the way I pray. Means that Mamish, this is the steepest steps. Why is it on Yom Kippur I'm standing before God and I'm doing Chuva? I can do Chuva any day in the world. Because Yom Kippur is the day when God opens. I want you to know something awesome. There's a Machlokis in the Mavrish. On which day <coughs> Abraham Wiener was thrown into the to the oven by Nimrod? According to some, it was the first day of Pesach, because Pesach is is the day <coughs> Abraham Avinu, because we left Egypt on the time of Abraham Avinu. But according to another message, it was Yom Kippur. Because what is all our mistakes? Because there's a little bit Pesach. Yeah, a little bit pagan, all of us. I listen to this one, I serve this one. You know, you know what the Pshischa says, what paganism is? It's most heartbreakingly beautiful. He says, imagine I'm sitting here, right? And I want to make myself like a rabbi, right? I'm sitting here, pray for him. And then the said to Mara, says to me, would you like to have another cup of coffee, right? But I have a feeling it doesn't look so nice for a rabbi to drink so much coffee, right? That's the feeling, right? There's not enough. I'm a pagan. I'm a pagan. I'm serving myself. A Jew is supposed to serve God. I mean, this is... You know, Avraham Avinu, Mesechta Abedizor, <coughs> has only five pokim in our shas. The Gemara says that Abraham Avinu had 400 pokim. Mesechta Abu Dezor, it's way out. Abraham Avinu had his own shaft. <coughs> in Abu Dezor, he had 400 pokim. So the Pshisko says that the way we live, according to Abraham Avinu, is 500, 400 pokim, we are Mamish pagan. We are not serving God. Maybe once a year where we do one thing for God, for real for God. Yes, so <coughs> this I do to make a good impression, this because I need to, this one I have to, this one I like to, you know. That's all paganism. And Yom Kippur, I'm mamish, cleansing myself from paganism. And if I cleanse myself from paganism, then I believe also I can change. Because then my believing God is so strong. I believe so. I can, I can, I was the lowest keeper for Kulnidra and after Kulnidra, I'm, I'm, I'm a new person. So he says, Chadoshim Lapkun is when the Mamish become a new person. The Mamish have to strengthen your belief in God. Have to strengthen your belief that you can Mamish. No limit. Because what is Tfila? Tfila is not putting limits on God. <coughs> And what's the Muna? I'm not putting them in some God. And I want you to know something, we learned it a lot of times. Um, there's a Torah, I think it's from the Bachem, but it's a Torah which Ramotel Chernobyl writes a lot of times in the Sefer. If you, Chasmishon, if a person does the most terrible thing in the world, the lowest Abbey on the world. 
And five minutes later, he said, you cannot govern Yom Kippur Shmanasa when you're a pagan. You know what that means? I'm putting limits on God. I say, listen, God, if I'm good and sweet, then you listen to me. I just did such a big avera. My relationship to you is ended. And here's the marriage. The marriage says that other Mauritian was a pagan. Unbelievable. The marriage says that the sin of Adam was he, that he was a pagan. Obviously. Other Mauritian, God spoke to me. Obviously, he was not a pagan. What does it mean he was a pagan? He put limits to God. Because according to him, if you do something wrong, then you're not so close to God anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell you something. Imagine I love somebody very much, you're the best friends, and then I do something wrong, and I don't talk to them anymore. Because it's clear to me, after I did this wrong, they don't love me anymore. It means I put limits to our friendship. Mm -hmm. Remember one of the Torahs, I always say at weddings, when the chosen breaks the glass, what's he telling? He's telling the bride, you can break anything in the world, I still love you the same. I still love you the same. Because why was Adam and Eve driven out from paradise? Because they put limits to us. If I eat the wrong apple, I'm just thrown out. Right? And Adam and Eve, somehow, it's even, even between them, you know what the Zohar Kodesh says? Kain and Hevel, the whole thing happened because, because Odom and Chava were not together 100%. Heartbreaking. Because they were always accusing each other. Chava would say, I don't know, if you would have told me stronger, I wouldn't have done it. And he would say, why did you tell me? You know, it's not wrong. And when you know, you know, Nachman makes it very clear in other places. Do you think Adam and Eve are different people than you and I? <coughs> We're the married couple, right? <laughs> Did you see the story of Dorothy in one of the Sikha Saran? He says, what do you think Abraham Avino woke up in the morning and he didn't wash Nagel with it? He woke up, he washed Nagel with it, and he went to the bathroom. This is our Holy Mother's story. She woke up, washed her hands, washed her face. Washed her teeth. A woman like you and I. He says, what makes them so special is not that we're different people, they're the same people. They were much more serious. They were much more serious. See, we don't take our Jewishness and our Menschlichkeit as serious as a woman. Mom is serious. I heard once also the Gerab, the Friedrich Gerab, the Imre Amis. Someone says to him, you know, in former good days, we had the Shoinim, the Rashpur, the Ram, the Rosh. And what's with us? We don't have such good heads anymore. He says, you're mistaken. Their head was as good as ours. The difference is only they were so much more serious. They took time on this way. He says, by ye you the Vamuna with Taguma Parishan Batsila. And you see what it is? I walk up to Dovid Zella and I say, Hadi Dovid, I want you to give me two million dollars. Why don't I ask him two million dollars? I don't really think he has it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have money in, this, in Switzerland, brother. Why, why am I asking what's shot? Because I think he has it, right? <laughs> As simple as it is. So he says, imagine if I'm asking God something and I really don't think God can do it. I'm not really asking him properly. You see what it is? It's really so crazy. The way I want God to change the world, I'm not really asking because I really don't think he can do it. Let's move just two more lines, then we'll change. You see, it's a it's a heavy act to follow the whistle of Nachman. 
Vedash, you see what he did. After Rabbi Nachman established that when you daven, when you daven, you receive the inside of your neshama. But you really need, obviously, every tribe needs something else. Because every tribe what makes one tribe different from the other, because they, they are their neshamas, they're different neshamas. And they're different neshamas, they're different about the Hashem. So it cannot be that, that, that Levi should daven the same thing like Ruben, and the Ruben should, uh, should daven the same thing like Yisrochavit. He says, with that, she is named Ose Shvotim, and she is named Ose Mazoros. You see, everybody knows that the stars are supplying unbelievable stuff, right? Which I don't know. The stars are supplying things which we, I'm sure we're only beginning a little bit to get to know the stars, right? I don't know if some of you know that Avraham Avinu was Mamash, the greatest astrologer in the world. Avraham Avinu was Mamash. God says, Vayoytze uh, Oyster uh, Achutze. It took him outside. So the Gemara says it took him outside the stars. Because <coughs> Avraham Avinu, like, so we cannot really see the stars properly because we see from inside. Our woman was outside. He looked. Now we should the stars. The Rosh Hashem would just. Oh, I have to tell you just throw in one more Gewalt story, which is Mamish good to remember. I hate to say bad things. You know, Brother Joe, I don't know if you remember. The Shabbos after my humble wedding, you were there in my house, you remember? I have to tell you, you know, I met the Shabbos for us very long, never. Suddenly my mother started yelling, let my people go. Our wedding year was on the first mother says, cut the cake. Everybody has a different way, it must have been a different tribe, right? Anyway, there's a title from the Yitak Kurdish. Why is it that Shabbos depends on three stars? Like a whole time, besides the moon, the essence of time is a, uh, depends on the stars. Three stars when Shabbos begin, three stars when Shabbos end, beyond everything. So he says, I give out her. Imagine you look up to the sky, see so many stars. What's my first reaction? Let's be realistic. You really think God needs all those millions of stars? With a few stars we're missing, it'd be the same, right? Why am I wrong? Because you'll never know which, which of all those millions of stars will be the three stars will begin Shabbos next week. Give out. So he says, you look at all the Eden, and you think, yeah, if this Eden would not exist, it also be good, right? There was the in my shoe. He had the, well, I mean, the most bad mouth ever in the world. People would come in and say, Mamish, I'm going to Israel. Say, but it's your mouth, it's beautiful. He would say, no loss for America, no gain for Israel. <laughs> <laughs> this was his underlying part. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you see what this, we, we never know, we don't know. You see one more thing, you know, why, why are we a little bit like the stars? Because Mamish, every star is doing something for the whole world. And we don't know what every need is doing for the world. You know, there is a term in the Siakrim. It says that it is possible that one need gives life to a whole nation of the world. The nation doesn't know about it and the need doesn't know about it. But if you would be on the top of the stars, you would see this whole nation is from this one need. Imagine we'd go up to to the highest heaven, we would see 
that all of the United States lives from the prayers of the Amshnov. Possible, right? And maybe all of China, who knows, right? The hot shade is my aura bit philosophy, Kayak Mazola, she was staying with some of the others. You know what it is like? You know what our problem is in relation to the world? First of all, inside, inside, we don't know how much the world really respects us. Maybe they angry at us a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe they're jealous. But deep, deep inside, they know we're even special. And also, we don't know that we're mamish giving them so much. You know, if I'm feeding a poor man, I'm relating to this poor man and saying, I'm feeding him, I might as well talk to you right Then I told you, I mean, I was in Marshall the first time. I met those two girls, teenagers, showed me with the shoes. I said to me, maybe you think that we Russians are enemies of Israel? They said, maybe the government, but not us, the Russian people. He says, we are so proud of you. We are so proud. I've gotten to my heart so deep. What do we know? But here I want you to know something which is deeper than the deepest depths. <coughs> the Heidegger, the Heidegger Abor Goritzer. Abor Goritzer was one of the children of the Holy Son. You know, Abor Goritzer is famous for one story. I mean, for love story, but one. One Friday night, the head of Sandra, Mamish, suddenly, you could see Mamish is leaving the world. It was Mamish sitting there, and it was Mamish so much bit vacant that he was, looked like he's Mamish time. So, so the head of Gorlitzer begins knocking like this, you know, to wake him up. Didn't help. So, so the head of the Mamish talks to him to all his father. And he thought he could maybe die from exhaustion because he's complete. So the Mamish opened his mouth and poured some tea into him. <laughs> so Mamish began coughing, you know. So, so he got away from his drake. So he says to him, to begin coughing, you know, still pouring tea in my mouth and I'm not really drinking it. It's so the son says to the girl, it says, in Alda Matsilis, you don't drink tea. Mm. You know? mm. He says, in Alda Matsilis, you don't cough either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the girl was like, he was Mamish, the biggest shamus of his father, as long as always taking care of him. And you know, the Heilige of Shinova, one of his main avoidance was to drive out the bukim. He was one of driving out the, the bukim. You know, the bukim when somebody else so attention stuff to you. And also what you know, the, the Shinova says, at the end, after the, by, when he was at the end, he says, from now on there won't be any the bukim. Because they're not the digging we can drive them out. He said, the version was always marked him with a fool of and, and if there won't be enough to dig him to drive them out, so they won't come. Anyway, so he, you know, you know how he called his brother, the Shinova? Called him the Dibbig. <laughs> <laughs> and you know something? The last 13 years of the Shinova, the Heilige Gorazza didn't speak to him. People would say, why don't you talk to your brother? What is he thinking? You want me to talk to a Dibbuk? 
Okay. And by the sons of Yosef, there were thousands of people and all the children. He would, Mamishna talk to Shimon. 